Picture this, you're decorating your amazing upcoming level. Unless you're making a level with only black and white, you will eventually have to add colors to your design, and things could really get messy at this point. If your level is lacking colors, the design could become boring and repetitive, and if you just add random colors that clash with each other, you'll just make an abomination, honestly. So, if you're struggling to work with colors and want to learn how to use them more effectively, this is the perfect video for you. With that said, let's quit wasting time and just jump right into it. A good place to start off is to know about brightness, saturation, and hue. These are the core elements, you must understand them in order to keep going. So in a summary, brightness controls how light or dark a color is. Here's an example of how it works. We can see that setting the brightness of our color to zero will get the color black. However, to get a white color, 100% brightness won't do it. For that, we need to look at saturation. Saturation determines the intensity of the color. For example, low saturation will give us a very faint tone, while setting at a higher value will give us a stronger, more vibrant color. Grabbing any color and turning down the saturation will make it turn to white. Using saturation and brightness, we could get various shades of gray as well. Now, last but not least, hue. To understand it better, we need to look at a color wheel. Let's suppose this is the point zero. Since it's a circle, you should have 360 degrees. Any color that you pick will have a certain position on this wheel. To demonstrate, I'll pick my favorite color, purple. If I change the hue property, it's like spinning the wheel. For example, if I set the hue to 50%, the wheel will turn 180 degrees. With these properties, you can make any color that you want in the editor. And speaking of the color wheel, let's dive deeper and analyze in more depth. Here's where the magic begins. So far, we've only seen examples with only one color. But as I said, a monochromatic level could get a bit boring. There are infinite color combinations that you can choose, but it doesn't mean that they work well together. For that, we have to look at what is called color groups. The first color group I want to mention is analogous. It consists of colors that sit right next to each other on the color wheel. It was widely used in 9 circles levels. Fear Me, Jawbreaker, Fairy Dust, 9 circles, and Sharp Minor are just a few examples. The creators would usually pick a color and then slightly change the hue to make the other structures. Next up is my favorite. Complementary colors are colors that are located in opposite sides of the color wheel, such as yellow and purple and blue and pink. These colors work extremely well together, and a lot of levels are made using only complementary colors. A level that immediately pops into my head is Knight Rider. While some parts may have a few details that are in different color, the main ones are still definitely blue and pink. I'm gonna put triadic and tetradic colors in the same section, since they are really similar. Basically, if you make a triangle in the middle of the color wheel, the colors that are in the vertices should look good when combined. These are known as triadic colors. If you instead make a square, you'll get a tetradic color. Not gonna lie, they are a bit harder to work with, but if used correctly, can add a lot of variety into your project. Another concept worth sharing are the categories of warm and cool colors. Tones like red, orange, and yellow are considered to be warm colors since they give a feeling of fire or heat. The ones that give an icy feeling such as blue and some shades of purple are called cool colors. Green is a bit left out but it's mostly considered to be a cool color as well. But what about white, gray, and black? They are of course the neutral colors. A bit underrated but still super important. You can't build a level using only warm and cool colors, there's gotta be some neutrals in there as well. And a creator that comes to mind when talking about neutral colors is Spoofy. You can take a look at his levels Critical Effect and Backbeat Maniac for some good examples. As you start adding more and more colors to your level and putting objects on top of others, something to always keep in mind is contrast. Adding a subtle dark glow behind blocks, arrows, and foreground elements can help the player see what's part of the background and what is not. Well, that was a lot, wasn't it? If you got stuck at a certain part or have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two with this video. If you enjoyed, why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more upcoming videos. And as always, thanks for watching.